Okay. I'm just going to wait a moment for folks to join in and uh, then we'll get started. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like we have some folks joining in. Um, anyway, uh, well, listen, um, here's to Memorial Day. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be a little bit briefer today because uh, I know that, that you're with your, your loved ones and, uh, and you're enjoying your day. So, um, like I said, I'll, I'll be a little bit briefer. But um, I did want to show you this. I did want to show you this artifact. And let me pull this out for you. And I want to ask you, as I show this to you, what this artifact has to do with Memorial Day. Um, let me see if I can pull this up so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, there's a lot of sort of tissues here and everything. Okay, so I'm showing you this. This is a vest, right? This vest was owned by James Monroe. And um, I'm asking you what this has to do with Memorial Day in a roundabout way, but what does it have to do with, with Memorial Day? And in order for me to answer that question, um, I want you to come with me on a story, okay? Come with me on the story. So remember this vest, and remember as I'm telling you the story, and, and think to yourself, what, what would this vest have to do with Memorial Day? Um, imagine... You're a young James Monroe, okay? And imagine that you're around 19 years old, okay? You're a young soldier in the Continental Army. And it's hours before one of the most pivotal, one of the most pivotal battles of the Revolution, the Battle of Trenton, okay? A smaller battle, of course, right? It's a smaller battle, but it's, it was pivotal. It was a pivotal ba battle. And, of course, the Battle of Trenton, is associated with the crossing of the Delaware, right? We've all seen that famous painting of George Washington crossing the Delaware and, and uh, you know, with the icebergs and, and he's standing up on the, on the, uh, on the ship. Of course, that, that painting has a lot of inaccuracies, but we can, we can talk about that another time. But imagine, you, it's hours before the battle, you actually didn't cross, okay? You're a young soldier, you're, you're, pretend you're James Monroe and you're, you're around 19 years old, you're a young soldier, you actually didn't cross the with the main army okay you actually crossed hours before okay you were actually crossed hours before the main army so oh hey david hey izzy hey tara hey james um so you actually crossed hours before the main army so here you are young soldier um you know with you're with a detachment of about 50 men and you're with uh you're with actually george washington's cousin um, who was with you at the time as well, or William Washington, if I'm not mistaken. And you're, along, you're marching along this road, okay? Your job was to guard the Pemington and, and Lawrenceville roads to make sure that the Hessians didn't find out about the attack, okay? Your, your job is to make sure they did, didn't find out about the attack because that's how important this battle was to be. That's how important this attack was because... You know, you had been losing some, and morale was low, and you guys needed this win. And in some ways, this was sort of a Hail Mary pass. So here you are, young soldier. It's cold. It's dark. You're marching along this road. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if anyone's going to jump out or, or if you're going to be attacked. You have no idea. Um, you know, you're with your, your band of brothers. Um, again, a detachment of about 50 men. You take up a, a post uh, around this old farmhouse. Okay, so you and your men, you start, you start taking posts around this old farmhouse. You're guarding, you're cold, you're trying to stay warm, you're shivering, it's sleeting out. It's starting to sleet, okay? You don't know what's going to happen. You're nervous, you know, the next day you're going to be, you know, progressing on this attack against the Hessian garrison at Trenton, which could maybe make or break the war. You don't know. Suddenly, the dogs start barking, right, in this farmhouse, and... This crazy doctor comes out, this guy named Dr. Riker, and for Star Trek fans, I'm not making that up, his name was Dr. Riker, okay, comes out of the farmhouse, okay, and he starts yelling at you, this, this doctor's yelling, he's, you know, who are you, whatever, because he thinks 
that you're British soldiers. So in some ways, that's kind of a good sign, right? Because that means that he, no one was suspecting that there would be a continental uh, detachment going down that road. So in some ways, that's a good thing, right? So he starts yelling at you, cursing at you, thinking you're British soldiers. You calm him down. You make them realize that you're not British soldiers. You're actually, or you're, you're not Hessian. You're actually in the Continental Army. So he calms down, you know, and everything, and he realizes what's going on. He actually invites you into the house because, you know, he wants to give you food and everything, but, but you're, you're a good soldier, so you, you, you don't want to come in because you refused because you want to maintain your posts, okay? But this crazy doctor, Dr. Riker, he says, well, guess what? I'm coming with you. So this doctor goes along with your band of brothers, you and, and, and this attachment of men, and he decides to join you. He's a surgeon, actually. He decides to join you uh, to the Battle of Trenton. So you guys start marching down. And it was uh, 1776, right? December 26th, 1776. And let's fast forward. Okay, so you fast forward to the actual attack in the morning of, 17, of December 26th. The Hessians were, got, were caught, they were caught off guard. Let's just face it, they were. They were caught off guard. You know, they start yelling, you know, the enemy, the enemy. And, you know, you're coming in. Um, they do manage to set up two cannon, okay, in the road. So they, they, in, the, in the town of Trenton, they do manage to set up two cannon where your unit is attacking them, okay? So you rush forward. You know, you're a young soldier. You know, you're 19 years old. And, and you know, young guy, I mean, some folks, he, he wasn't that much older than some of our graduating class right now, Okay. You rush forward into this cannon, and you know Washington, uh, you know Washington's cousin, uh, uh, you know William Washington. He actually gets injured. He, he gets badly injured, and as you're running forward, all of a sudden, bam, smack! You get hit with a large caliber lead ball. Okay, just slam into your shoulder. Now, it's not like on TV. Okay, right where you you get hit in the shoulder and you you're fine and you, you're you're dancing around and everything is great. No, no, no. You, you get slammed by this, and it actually nicks your artery, okay? If you're James Monroe, it nicks your artery, and you start bleeding out in the shoulder. So you're dying, okay? You're dying. Um, you know, this is a very serious, grievous wound. You're, 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 you're going out. You're bleeding out. You're laying there, and all this chaos, all this gunpowder, all this gunpowder, all, all, this, all this, this fighting, this shouting, this chaos, you're down there with a wound but a, a massive caliper musket ball lodged in you and it hits your artery and you're bleeding out you, you're dying well who do you have with you but this crazy doctor named dr Riker, who decided to come with you at the last minute and <laughs> come along and march with you well he turns out to be a pretty good surgeon and he comes in and he ends up stopping the bleeding saves your life Okay, so he comes on and think of the think of the fate of that. You just happen to meet this guy who is hours before yelling at you, accusing you of being a British soldier, when turns out he's the one that comes in and he saves your life. After this gallant act that you just did, you just rushed forward to attack these these cannons, okay? To attack this, these two cannon positions. So that was a gallant act that you did. Um, but in, but you were met with a musket ball. So it saves your life and you actually end up living. Um, you re actually end up recuperating in Pennsylvania. So, why am I telling you this? And what on earth does it have to do with this vest? And what does it have to do in a roundabout way with Memorial Day? Well, something that's interesting about this vest and some of these other vests that we have here, right? This was worn decades after the Revolution. This wasn't worn during the, the, the Revolution. This was worn decades later. It's kind of fancy schmancy, right? It's, it's what? It's silk velvet. It's got fancy embroidery. You see that all there? So this doesn't look like a, a, a soldier. This is not a soldier's uniform. But when the conservators were doing work on these vests, okay, they discovered an interesting discrepancy. They discovered a discrepancy that one of the shoulders, one of the holes for the shoulders, was off proportionally in measurement to the other one. And it looked like it had been tailor-made to account for a discrepancy. And what that means is, and what we think that means is, 
that it was accounting for the discrepancy of the bullet that was in James Monroe's shoulder that he had kept with him his entire life. So this vest was tailor-made to a bullet wound that he had received during the Battle of Trenton and became, and, you know, as his muscles as grew on and everything, and became perhaps atrophied because of that service and because of the revolution. That bullet remained with him his entire life until the day he died, which was 1831 on July 4th. And I'm not making that up. So that bullet, and in some ways this vest, this, it was, that bullet was a reminder every day of not just the revolution, okay, not just the revolution, but of the folks that died during the revolution, his friends, okay, it says he, he was a young guy during the revolution, these are his friends, a lot of these guys were, a lot of these folks were his friends that died during the revolution, and he never forgot those that died during the revolution, and as odd as it seems, this vest, in some ways, is a solid and a tangible, to this day, reminder of that battle and of the dangers and of the folks that died during the revolution. And let me read you this quote. Again, I said I'll be brief because I know it's Memorial Day and I know you want to get, to get to your families. But I'll read you this quote by James Monroe. It says, Though young at the commencement of our revolution, I took part in it, and his principles have invariably guided me since. So James Monroe never forgot the, the folks that died during his service and his friends that died, and neither will we. So here's to Memorial Day, and here's to remembering all those that we lost during military service. And I hope you're with your loved ones and having a great day. And again, I said I'll be brief, and uh, thank you for tuning in.